You're listening to the Game Tenants Podcast. What's up, and welcome to the Game Tennis Podcast, the failed adventures of two gamers and their quest for GameCast stardom, aka worthlessly lazy, but so game crazy. This is episode 73, and I am Church of the Game Grinder, and as always, joined by my excellent co-host, Jason of Corpse of the Game, and how's it going, everybody? What up? So much. I'm so hyped to be here today. Yeah, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of crazy stuff going on in the, the, in the YouTube world the gaming world. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Some pros uh, being not so pro. Some Jared's not being so pro pro. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever about that shit. We're not we going to talk about, about that, that shit, today. though. No, we got cooler shit to talk about. Some trailers for some upcoming games we're excited about. Uh, and some really cool uh, game-related documentaries what? about some games that we love. And a few other things, and then we're gonna chat it up about some beat 'em ups. I Hell am hyped. You. If, if uh, I don't know, I'm no uh, stranger to beat 'em ups, especially lately. Yeah. I don't know about you. Seems fitting. Oh uh, yeah. Something. Hell yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, what you been up to, pal? I have not been gaming as much actually. Lately, what the fuck? yeah, right, been, right, been doing some right. video stuff though. Delete, cancel this shit. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, it's kind of been a interesting last couple weeks. Just been like doing things, but non video game stuff. Unfortunately, Yo. went to a couple concerts. Uh, shout out to Perturbator, um, which is if anybody's played Hotline Miami, they would be familiar with Perturbator. He is a, a synthwave artist or group or whatever. It's it's a dude, but his Entity. live, sh- yeah, his live show. Uh, well, he actually just came through uh, the Twin Cities on tour, and I was like, yeah, absolutely, I want to go to that. Even though you know, typically I go to my metal shows, I'll go to some other stuff, and it was, it was awesome. Um, you know, it sounded just like music. Uh, played one song. That was featured in Hotline Miami 2, uh, Future Club, which is a cool right. song. But the live show, uh, he actually, instead of doing electronic drums, he has a drummer. And cool. it just adds like so much more punch to the music. I bet. Super cool. Yeah. Super cool. If anybody gets a chance, go see Perturbator. If you aren't familiar with Perturbator, listen to Perturbator. It's super good. It's like... Uh, electronic kind of retro synth stuff kind of trancey yeah i heard about them like kind of by accident i don't remember what i was hotline listening miami. to but it just like popped up oh, but it was i think it was before hotline miami was out and i just remembered hearing it and thinking like this sounds like some kind of boss music from like a 16-bit game or some yeah shit. for sure like, just like just like the other band that was playing with them actually i think we, uh, were talk- we talked a bit about it yeah, ghost, not the. I thought it was the, ghost. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. It's G O S T. It's not G H O S T. Ghost, like the the yeah. rock band with the the black, black metal look. Yeah, with, <laughs> they, they they really in with that look, and then you go and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, and it's like now they're well. I mean, the, the ghost with the H, like their early material, I thought was great, but their later stuff is like just a a little too much like poppy like pop rock like just too much like i don't know i don't even know what you can it's just like just rock with like a theatrical yeah, vibe to it a little bit i don't know i checked out a few of their songs and i didn't get into them. maybe i didn't listen to the right stuff but i mean i would suck to kind of like the old stuff and then hear their new stuff anyway i guess so yeah. anyways stuff, <laughs> <laughs> anyways yeah perturbator was great um then, like I said, I've been working on some video stuff. Uh, put out my MGC 2019 pickups video. 
which Ray! yeah uh, so i don't know i it's a pickup video a lot of you if it, it, it listeners have probably seen my pickup videos in the past but i don't know what it was about this one like i just felt really good about this video like i don't know i don't know what it is check it out it's because he cut the sleeves off your t-shirt and we're flexing the whole time and thought we wouldn't notice that shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. You're like, I got um, the skimmer right here, and he just did the curl with it in your hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, then uh, another podcast uh, that I took part in uh, was released uh, a couple weeks ago, just like right after our last episode of the podcast. Uh, but there is a new podcast associated with the Cartridge Club called the Quick Save Club which is a monthly PC game, uh, game of the month group uh, that has a, you know, uh, end of the month podcast where they're pulling in some guests from the Cartridge uh, Club community. Um, and the first episode was talking about some Diablo, which is pretty much why I played Diablo previously. Uh, well, again, anyways. Oh, I was going to say, why the hell did they ask you about Diablo? Yeah, I don't know. It's <laughs> weird. Okay. It's super weird. Just like... <laughs> I mean, they called it... I mean, uh, the the current game of the month, I could also be on that podcast, too. This current game of the month uh, is Half-Life, and that's like one of my other fa- like all-time favorites. But uh, yeah, check them out. Check out that podcast. It, I think it was a lot of fun. Great podcast. I'm looking forward to the next episode. Um hey, I- but then for games, uh, like I said, haven't been playing a whole lot. I did play a couple beat 'em ups from the Capcom beat 'em up bundle. Uh, played through Battle Circuit, which I enjoyed quite a bit. Uh, pretty interesting beat 'em up. I like the. There's a lot of beat 'em ups. Just got your standard like punch kick, and maybe a super move. This one you get two super moves, which I thought was pretty neat. Uh, one that takes life, and one that doesn't take life. Cool. I like the ones where you get like the tiered super moves too. Those yeah, are cool. yeah, you can like save it up, make it yeah, bigger, like, like golden axe type stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I wish but I also played um, uh, Captain Commando, and I didn't, I didn't love that one as much. Like I like the characters, but it's very just straightforward. There's not even super moves in that it, one. It's like it's like they put all their creativity into the characters, like the baby and the mech and shit. Yeah, and the ninja. Yeah, it's like a. Well, it, it, it was okay, but yeah. I mean, if I it didn't have the baby in the mech, like I probably would have been like, eh. But <laughs> I had baby in the mech, which was just like <laughs> so nine out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, still playing Beat Saber. Um, happy to say I finally gave took a crack at some Expert Plus uh playthroughs, which is like I think Expert is really like a very sweet spot. Expert plus maybe like once I get better at them, but it's just like it's crazier than shit. And I don't think some of them I'll have the patience to actually sit down and try to figure out the songs. But I was just trying to play through every song, like, oh, I'm just gonna play it and check it out. And I met, ended up beating two songs, like on my first go, which was I was pretty thrilled about that. Adequate. Adequate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So uh, uh, I, I, I meant to ask you about that for the one year anniversary of it. Did the PS4 version get the like original version or something like that? Like I, I read somewhere no. like, that they released uh, like what what their like early version of it was. Yeah, it was like? basically like their demo version or their beta version. So uh, is that only, that's only on PC. Yeah, only PC. <laughs> oh, book. So, eh, it's kind of whatever. Um, you know, you get- I think it's. It's more interesting than anything. I, I did download that that demo version just in the case that uh, in the future I do get PC VR. But cool. Uh, but yeah, it was just a neat little thing that they did. Um, but mainly, I'm still playing Days Gone um, here and there. It's kind of a it's kind of a long game. I kind of wish it was a little shorter. Um, but you not hating. Open world, you getting that open world burnout kind of like Red Dead Two. After a, while, a little you're bit, like, you're just like okay, done a there. little bit, and, and mainly because the game is good. Yeah, if the game was great, then it'd be like, oh, I'd have a little bit more drive. But 
And yeah. like I said, it's not a knock to the game. Like it's it's a good game. No hate whatsoever. I think it's totally worth playing, but it's just good. And yeah, I'm kind of getting that open world burnout where I just like to, you know, like kind of like let's go, let's go. You know, maybe like keep this like you know, it doesn't. I mean, it, 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 it all has to be like, Yeah, yeah. I mean, they are like world building and stuff, and uh, maybe I could skip side quests but it's kind of hard to tell like what is like what what's, be, what's, what's the side quests and what are the main stories because it gives yeah. you like a list of basically like of these story arcs that you're playing through and that's your that's your completion percentage is yeah. like all these story arcs and i'm not even sure which one's the main one like there's a couple that could be the main one but i think they're kind of tied together so i'm just kind of you know i'm doing all the missions as they come across so i'm not really like skipping things necessarily, but there's like some extra stuff I could be doing that are more just kind of like, you know, uh, clear out these areas for the heck of it. And then, you know, it, it marks it on the map or whatever. Like some of those I'm kind of skipping until I like hit the areas, but. Okay. So sounds kind of like Far Cry things like take over the camps. And yeah. Yeah. Theories and Yeah. yeah okay. Totally. Totally. Like um, just, just like if you're just, if you need more, Go ahead and do this, but if you don't, just go ahead and skip that shit. Yeah, and you know the game does it's it it's doing its like character and world building, so that's good. But it's just like I just kind of want it to move along uh, a little bit quicker. And it, I think it's funny, you know. Uh, today here here I'm complaining that the, that a game is too long. It's like, what's wrong with me? Come on, man, that should be a good thing, right? Yeah, but we're busy adults. You know, <laughs> with that, that's backlog. no. But that so shouldn't be. I think the bigger the backlog, the the more you <laughs> want a game to just kind of like hurry up. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's our own fault. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure most people listening can can commiserate with us on that one. No, I totally know what you mean though, because there's some games where I'm just like, all right, wrap her up, and then there's other games where I'm like, oh man, is there like nothing else I can do? Is there? yeah you know, for like sure little, little arena battles or something i could go do for a couple hours because i love this yeah yeah, yeah. totally totally Definitely. but what have you been up to a lot actually i mean so cranking up my two games. hell yeah cranking up those games i'm getting my two videos a week up. so many videos oh. so Awesome. Wednesday, Wednesday and Saturday every week I've been getting one at five central p.m. <laughs> Not a.m. I'll get up early to watch it. But uh, I've also gotten a, a bonus video that I'm finally glad to get out. Like all these videos, they're basically all catch up videos. Uh, but I finally got out the God of War loot crate unboxing video that my wife and I. Filmed probably, I don't know, five months ago. Mm. Just, I've never got around to editing this kind of stuff. But now with a little bit of extra time, I'm actually getting to do this kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's, it's amazing. So, yeah, that just came out uh, two days ago. Um, and I'm starting up some other uh, video projects that are going to hopefully keep me uh, more consistent, like uh, every week or two weeks or so. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited to share more on that later when I get more figured out for it. Um, actually looking in gaming a bit, or I don't know, maybe let's play. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try my hand at streaming all these arcade games and stuff I've been playing because they're just a really good time, and I think it would be kind of easy to do. Uh, that being said, I've uh, I cut back on my amount of games I beat, but I think I played about as I've spent about as much time playing games. Mm-hmm. I'm still, tre- I'm still trekking along on Trails of Cold Steel. Still not feeling that story. It's getting a bit better, um, but it's still. I don't know. I think it's the side quest stuff. Like, it, like I said, it's it follows a like a day to day school life thing. So they'll be like, "Oh, you got your day off. Go do all these things running around for the." school council and this and that 
Mm -hmm. and three quarters of it i don't really care but then there's this one where you got to explore this old schoolhouse and it's basically like a dungeon and you got to do that at the end of every like month or whatever so yeah. that's pretty much what i look forward to when i'm doing it hmm. and then the, the day just basically the day-to-day -day mini side quest stuff is just kind of pointless to me so that's kind of bringing me out of it but i'm still loving the battling in it and the battling is getting better and better so i'm hoping they, i'm hoping the story moves along with it i like a, i like a bunch of the characters i just the story just seems to be really taking its time I'm about 30 hours in so I don't want to be one of those games where I'm telling people, oh, you got to play it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of boring until like 35 hours in, then it gets so good. Like, mm. I don't want, I don't want to be recommending like that. Like the combat in it, I love. And I'll, anything to combat, I can get behind. But just the other stuff, I really don't care. I don't, their world building in this is something I don't really care about. So that being, that being said, that's... Uh, that's an ongoing battle with me. I'm going to finish it, hopefully by the end of the month. Uh, and probably the coolest news for me, anyway, is I beat Captain America and the Avengers on my arcade plug-and-play. Nice. And the coolest part about that is my three-year-old son, Saren, uh, beat it with me. <laughs> that's awesome. And that's the first game we've ever played together, and it's the first game we beat together. Nice. For a three-year-old, he did really good, uh, especially when he finally got to be Iron Man. Because at first he wanted to be Captain America, but then he saw me kicking ass as Iron Man, so then he <laughs> wanted to be Iron Man. <laughs> so oh, yeah, it's, really fun. it's basically uh, it's the Super Nintendo game is a port of it, but uh, I've heard the Super Nintendo version is harder. I just got it in my retro game treasure, so I'll be checking that out. But yeah, it, was, it was a pretty yeah, fun cool. game. It looks like, kind of remind me of like Maximum Carnage, honestly. Yeah, it was, it was quite a bit like it. Yeah, the, it brings in all these kind of... Maybe they're just obscure now, but I think they were used a lot more in the comics in the, the 90s and stuff when there wasn't a whole lot of Avengers hype. Because mm. the, the four characters you can be in the game are Captain America, Iron Man, Hawkeye, and Vision. Mm. And uh, yeah, they bring in just the randomest... Like, thinking of it now, like... It, According to, you know, like these guys aren't in the MCU, like three quarters of them. Mm -hmm. But then you, you start seeing a couple that were in there, you know, there's going to be like uh, crossbones and you fight the juggernaut, but the juggernaut doesn't even look like the juggernaut from the comics. He's hmm. like, his suit is like the juggernaut, but his helmet, it just looks like a big round orb with like a round black. It's like his head looks like a big eye, basically. Hmm. So I, th I thought that was a little weird. It's like the people didn't know the comics. But uh, yeah, he fights. He fights some other cool bad guys in it. It was a uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to playing more uh, games with him. I I actually started playing The Punisher again with him, and he thought it was pretty cool. But then something interrupted us, so we didn't get to finish that. But it was it was fun by myself. So it was uh, definitely cool to revisit it with him. I'm pretty sure we're gonna end up beating all the superhero games on this thing before uh, too long. Maybe I'll even maybe I'll even stream that because he's hilarious when we're playing too. He just his comments are just ridiculous, <laughs> <laughs> kind of like mine. So he's a chip off the old block. <laughs> awesome. Uh, next up, I played Battle Garega, which uh, kind of caught my attention again. I played it before, like a long time ago in the arcades, but uh, it's been available for a little while in the PS4. Uh, and I think the Xbox maybe too. I'm not even tired on that, but it, what kind of jogged my memory on it was a limited run just did a, uh, a release of it this past Friday, actually. Mm. And uh, man, I remember liking the game a lot. So I played through it and it's pretty kick ass. It's one of those games that it's not cheap with the uh, power ups. And if you die, like they, they go flying to the top of the screen and you can catch some of them. Mm -hmm. before they're gone so you don't just totally lose out oh yeah like, like, it, it, it kind of reminded me of apb in a way but it wasn't as insane as apb but like that aspect of it reminded me of it for sure it was it was definitely a cool game but it seemed kind of short so i'm kind of glad i didn't uh jump on the limited run release of it uh and then next like this was earlier today i played 
I think my least favorite beat em up I've ever played. And it was called Blade Master. It was it just felt like some uninspired Golden Axe wannabe without any of the Golden Axe bells and whistles. There's two characters to choose from, and they both do the same attack the whole game. The, there's a big guy who just does a stab motion the whole game. <laughs> there's this other guy, the smaller guy, who just does a sword swipe the whole game. And you got to attack where you jump, and it's basically just like a chopping thing like you'd expect in a game like that. Mm. And that's it. There's no super moves. No combos of any kind. It was the most boring slog of a beat em up I've ever played. So that was a bit of a bummer. Uh, the most creative thing I'd say in the whole game, like some of the, the characters look cool, the graphics weren't bad, but yeah, it was just really boring. Like there was nothing to break it up. It was the same guys every level. Uh, I know a lot of beat em ups do this where you beat a boss in a level and they're just like a regular kind of tougher enemy in the next level. Mm. The same did that to like a, a mind numbing amount. The second, the second boss that you fight look basically looks like a giant samurai super shredder type dude. And I was like, Oh, this is pretty cool. Uh, and the coolest like mechanic uh, is when you knock over a big guy, like a boss, you can jump on their chest and just like stab them in the head or the chest or whatever. Mm -hmm. to do more damage to them that was probably the 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 biggest thing that i had to like figure out i was like oh that's kind of cool and then it threw you like oh yeah you thought that guy was tough now there's two of them oh now there's three of them and it was, like that, those were legit bosses yeah through most of the game like it was just yeah, yeah it was really I, can't, I i don't know i can't even over like exaggerate how boring this game was so i'm bored of talking about it so, <laughs> so then to to uh bring my mind off that terrible game i i played bakio right after and that's one of the best uh beat em ups i'd say for a kid that i've played uh i'd actually call it a beat em shmup because a lot of it felt like i was playing a shooter game mm -hmm. even like in the walking levels because like you when you get close to guys, you, you punch them and kick them and stuff. But when you're like not close to them, you just shoot a blaster. So you can like walk up and down the screen shooting your blaster. So in that way, it kind of felt like I was playing a side scrolling shoot 'em up. So that was that was definitely what I needed after playing that other shit. Nice. Yeah, I've heard good things about it. I've yeah. never played that or the NES game, but I hear they're good. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. The yeah, it's definitely a lot different from the NES game. And NES games is like a platformer, but yeah, yeah, it's both cool games. I I played it on the NES Mini, but it was a uh, yeah, it's one of those games I want to get eventually. I used to watch the show for how briefly it was on. Mm -hmm. I think I even had a Bucky O'Hare action figure. Now that I think of it, because I remembered having Bucky O'Hare and Earthworm Jim. Anyway, and then the next game I I played was. World War Z. Yeah. I don't know if you want to talk more about that. Kinda yeah. Share your thoughts. thoughts. All right. Well, it's it's no uh, secret that it's basically a Left 4 Dead clone. But it's a really good Left 4 Dead clone. Like, it definitely expands on the Left 4 Dead formula in a good way. Mm. It's, a third, it's a third person, uh, which is, like, one of the only big changes from it it's got the special zombies like the smoker and all that kind of stuff like there's a there's basically an equivalent of each left for dead one except for the tank there's not really a big tank one there's like one that's like the charger would be like the closest thing to it but uh yeah i really i really liked it there's no jumping but there's like you can vault over stuff and stuff like that but I never found myself getting stuck on stuff where I needed to jump, so <laughs> it, it's not really missed. Uh, there's parts where you get to like certain area, and they'll be like, "Oh man, we gotta wait for this door to to open," and it's it's really loud, so it'll like, you know, it'll it'll summon this giant flood of zombies, just like in the movies, the ones that like climb on top of each other to make these like pyramids to 
climb walls and stuff. Like, if, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> yeah, the movie wasn't that great. This that, this is way better than the movie. So don't let uh, Brad Pitt spoil you on this one. <laughs> it uh, yeah. And it, then you set up all these like fortifications. So don't, it, then it kind of feels like a, a hard mode, like mm-hmm. kind of like, as a war kind of game. You set up these like turrets or like blockades to to hold them back. And do you do that often per level? Because that was yeah. like that's like. I mean, Left 4 Dead had those moments too. Like, there's yeah. usually like two or three per, like level. You mean like, I mean story block kind of thing? Yeah, because yeah, you had your, your level like, for campaign. Yeah, campaign, yeah. There's there's a yeah there's there's a couple per, per chapter even. Some of them only have one big one. Mm-hmm. Some of them you'll have to. Yeah, there was like yeah there was a couple couple like that that were, I was I was just right into it. Um, yeah, I've heard and been your, your AI partners aren't stupid either. They actually stick pretty close to you. So, you know, when you get like pounced on and you'd, be, you'd just be getting clawed and you'd be like, what are these guys doing? Oh, there's one zombie. All three of them have to take care of over there. Okay. Well, I'll just die then, I guess. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just remember that a lot when I'd play uh, Left 4 Dead. And, but they seem to be like pretty close by. They kind of follow you around. They don't do any of the objective stuff mm-hmm. on their own. It's, it's mainly you doing it all, yeah. like, which makes sense. Or else you could just like hide in a corner and let him do everything. Right. But uh, yeah, there's a, there's a ton of weapons to choose from. You level up the weapons, which unlocks stronger versions of the weapons. You, there's, I think there's six different classes to choose from. And you, you can unlock more perks. You can unlock, like you start with a better weapon. You, your web you can hold more ammo that kind of stuff you do more melee damage shit like that and uh it's really a, kind of like a glimpse into like what would left for dead 3 be like if they put it out on this gen it's pretty much what i'm feeling like like i'm not well we will find out i'm not actually here we, we better because turtle rock is making a spiritual successor to left for dead yeah. called back for blood yeah that's when we we mentioned a couple a couple yeah. of podcasts ago so yeah, we're, he was hoping it's as good as this because uh they're getting free updates they're, actually i think one of the campaigns that i played was a free add-on because i think it shipped with three campaigns but there's a a tokyo campaign it's not the same characters throughout like the left for dead games like the first one you played through the same people in all the campaigns. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one, it's like city by city. There'll be like a New York campaign, which will be four people through that whole campaign. Then there's uh, Jerusalem, and that's four different characters. And then there's uh, Moscow, with four different characters. And then there's uh, Tokyo. And the Tokyo one, I think, was like the most intense, but it was actually the shortest because they all of them have like three chapters. Mm-hmm. But Tokyo had two but it was like the closest i came to to failing on the the first time i played it because i played through them all twice like i played through them on an easier i think like normal it doesn't really tell you what normal is but there's like a skull amount i think there's five skulls and i played through uh i think two or three and then i played it and i just upped it one more i didn't go on insane because i was like yeah that's something i probably want to play with other actual people yeah or but a lot of the objectives were very um, very reminiscent of stuff like, you know, you got to get the gas to start the generators. Sure, yeah. But, but it'd be, there'd be stuff like uh, there's one where you go to the subway and you got to get the guys like, yeah, you want to ride on the train. You got to pick up the supplies and put them in the train for me. So hmm. it was a, it was really cool. The stories I find were like actually kind of more more interesting. The way they played out. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to say. You better watch that. Or watch what you're gonna say there. Yeah. That's not, like I said. They. I'm not talking shit about either one. They're like. <laughs> they're neck. Honestly, they're neck and neck for me. They. That's how much I enjoy. Because I absolutely love the Left for Dead games. But. If that's that's why I said in my tweet, if you are. 
if you're wanting Left for Dead game, like you should not miss out on this at all. Cool. So, yeah, yeah I wish you, I wish you'd played it too, so we could uh, we could chat up more about it, more comparisons. Yeah. But yeah, the the special infected seem to show up a lot more in this game than in the other. Mm-hmm. And and the the there's one called the Lurker, which which is the ones that pounce on you. And they seem to be like way more and they seem to be actually kind of predictable. It is like randomly generated. But when you when like they hear one, they'll be like, I I think there's a creep nearby. And then I'm like, how do they know I'm playing this? <laughs> no, then then I'll be like, I bet she's just right in here on this corner. And I'm like, yeah, he's right there. Okay. Mm. It's pretty more predictable than like sure. Left for Dead, but and they go down a lot easier. But yeah, it is cool. what it is. I really hope they put out some more campaigns because the the like the leveling and all that. I played a little bit of the multiplayer, not too much. I played like a match or two. There's a couple different like PvP versions where you where they like they seem really interesting. I just didn't get too much into them. Mm. But it's something I could see myself going back to when I just want to screw around and not, you know, be trying to beat something. So I'll probably be revisiting it. It was it was a pleasant surprise because it just showed up on my Xbox from my uh, friend that I game share with. So I was like, oh, well, I guess I am playing that sooner rather than later. And the funny thing is, I didn't realize it was a cheaper game. Like I think it's only thirty nine ninety nine rather than the sixty dollar price tag. So I was like, man, I actually might have picked it up if I knew that. So eventually I'm going to get a physical copy because you know how we do here. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's my uh, that's my talk it up about what I've been up to. <laughs> cool. Sounds good. All right. Well, let's uh, go into our retro game highlight. Then uh, last time I talked about Earthworm Jim. Uh, oh, yeah. because it is a great game, but we're also talking about the, the newly announced Earthworm Jim for the television amico yeah yeah we actually got a comment yeah. about yeah that was pretty cool yeah the, the uh, man himself yeah tommy calarico came and commented on the video he actually commented uh uh some months ago uh when they first announced the television amico we talked about it on the podcast and he commented about it then too so he must kind of check out, you know, see if people are kind of talking about it and what they're saying. What's uh, the vote? Well, he said it straight, so that's good. Yeah, yeah. He, we, weren't, we weren't talking shit or anything, but he like was like, oh, yeah, just so you guys know. Yeah, yeah. Um, kind of, you know, he's trying to get, you know, when people are talking about it, get the information correct and kind of spread a little hype. Like, let us know that, the, hey, there are going to be physical games for it. So that is cool, because that was like uh, one of the things that's- yeah. Saying that was like a little bit of a detriment to both of us. We're like, oh, it's a bummer that it's not going to be, you know, there's not going to be games I can actually collect for it. Well, I'm keeping an eye on it, though. Yeah. But. And I I was I was mentioning just kind of when we were talking about last time that he was, uh, you know, a big video game composer. And I don't think I mentioned the fact that he composed Earthworm Jim uh, soundtrack, which yeah, kind of makes sense with it being oh yeah and he didn't copyright strike our uh, intro music <laughs> yeah because i used the bonus stage music with this fucking psycho race yeah uh yeah, that's pretty- <laughs> so, yeah. it's cool it's always cool to even though you know he's commenting on when we can still feel special about it yeah yeah totally. <laughs> uh but so that was last time what you got for us this time i don't know you like arnold Arnold. Like, Arnold movies? like, hey, Arnold. Arnold Schwarzenegger movies? Arnold Schwarzenegger is the shit. He's like what? the king what? of action movies. There is there is no no action hero that even, like, compares. Pale. People try, people try to compare him to people do, but anyway, what's the best movie by him? The best Terminator movie? 2. Terminator 2. But all those games suck pretty much. Most well, of them. Most I, yeah, I'll argue again because I, I like the NES one. It's not great, but I like yeah. the LGN NES oh, game. The NES game is the best of them. 
Then the Game Boy game's all right. Arcade but... shooter. It's okay. No, no, Anyways. no. <laughs> no, it's a, it's, it's its own game. It's a pretty. Look it up. It's really cool. Not right now, but anyway, this the his last best movie I would say for his action movies was True Lies, and that's my pick this time. Sorry to be misleading. It's not a Terminator game. Yeah, uh, I just which, thought it, people would expect me to talk about for the Super Nintendo or the Genesis because it was very close. Yeah, so I'd say either or. You can't go wrong because you know back then. Games could be absolutely completely different. Yeah. So you play on one system and be like, "Yeah, that game sucks." When someone talks about it, but it's actually cool on both systems. Uh, it's like a isometric shooter, kind of like a Smash TV Zombies Ate My Neighbors type vibe to it, and it's hyper violent. So that's why I think more of us going more like Smash TV mm-hmm. direction. Uh, it doesn't follow the movie like exactly, but it doesn't need to because it's just awesome. <laughs> it's it's like it's like if Arnold programmed it and had programming knowledge. We need more explosions here. That's a <laughs> pretty much how it, every scene. He'd be like, "Okay, hey, what are we gonna do for this part? Well, I'm gonna shoot the guy in his face." Yeah, be, yeah. yeah. You, just, you just walk around and shoot people. Do I need to say anymore? Yeah, it's an LJN game. Speaking of LJN game, yeah, yeah, and it's actually one of the the few really good ones. So yeah, definitely check it out if you haven't. I'm actually still looking for it on the Super Nintendo. Hmm. I have it on the Genesis, but I've played both, and they are both excellent. Excellent. So, so yeah, that's my highlight. I dig it. Yeah. So. Uh, let's talk about uh, some news things we got. I think we got some little interesting things. Like I said, uh, we're not talking about like what everybody else is talking about necessarily. Pro Jared stuff. has been we're talking to that. We're not talking about any Ped Jared stuff. Yeah, yeah. But um, one thing that I remain hyped about, I don't care what anybody says. I don't care how long I have to wait. I've been hyped my whole life. I I was I was hyped like the day after the original game was released, but we got a new trailer for Final Fantasy VII remake, and I think it looks awesome. It looks yum num num num. So good. Uh, it, it, more they're just kind of showing off more of. I don't know if it didn't look like it was like much like gameplay necessarily. Like they showed some combat stuff. But yeah. they just like we didn't see menus or anything like that. But it definitely looked like they're kind of shifting more more towards the turn based again, which yeah, it was. Yeah, I couldn't really tell because uh, I watched it a couple times. I couldn't tell if it was like yeah, if it was turn based or if it was just like action RPG style. Yeah, like, yeah, like, a, like a Tales of game kind of thing. And I honestly, I I'd, I'd be fine either way. Yeah, I, I don't even care. Like I said, I as just long, as long I as it's the story, man. Just give me the story, and I'm good. As long as it's done well, however they do it, I don't think it's really a problem either way for me. I, I think the the funniest thing that I that uh, that came from this trailer is the the high demand, or I wouldn't say disappointment, but the disappointment that no, that we haven't seen Tifa still. And <laughs> I was like, yeah, good point. Let's see Tifa. Well, they're gonna they're gonna put it in like the the launch trailer, yeah, just to sell the copies. E three trailer, man, you're gonna see it. They're gonna have to sell. Ju- they'll sell Justin twelve copies just from that trailer. Yeah. That's that's his absolute fave. You're gonna. There's a good chance you will have the opportunity to see it in person, live. Yeah, bud. Because they said, yeah, at the end of the trailer, it says more to come in June. And what's in June? E three, buddy. E three hype. It's getting real. It's like three three weeks from now. Yeah, yeah. I've never been to the West Coast either, so it's super cool. For Super cool. my wife and I's 10, 10 year wedding anniversary. And it was her idea. Believe yeah. it or not. I gotta keep telling people that because no one's gonna believe me anyway. What what a wife. Pretty wicked. So I guess, I guess I should do something cool for her too. She's not yeah. a huge, she's not a huge gamer, but she's hyped to go. So yeah. I mean, know, I'm hoping to get some space. hands on on like a couple of these games. I uh, I saw a list when I was looking up news stuff about 
all the games that are confirmed to be there. So hope I can get out some good vids about E3 while I'm there. Yeah. Should hit up so there's there's a few peeps that like are in that area, sort of. I think like well, I guess I'm not sure. Where's E3? Well, is that E3 is in LA. It's in LA, okay. Yeah, I don't so know how far that is from like San Diego and stuff. You got like BMG a couple hours away, and Smash JT says it's an hour and a half drive. He's like, I don't know. If I actually hit him up and was like, Hey, are you going? He's like, I don't know. It's like an hour and a half drive. I'm like, Bro, I have drive. Come on, man. <laughs> I was like, Bro, bro. <laughs> but then again, that's probably a lot different in that area because that's like, it's like, uh, there's like three E3s a, a week down the block for me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, no hate on Jeff. He's still our buddy, but yeah. Yeah. Well, John John Riggs is gonna be there as far as I know. So that's cool. Uh, yes. Maybe I'll see him over standing over everybody. So yeah. that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, so dude, that'd be really neat to run into yeah. some like acquaintances and stuff. Yeah, people like I actually know that might know who I am. <laughs> yeah. So I've talked to him a, I've talked to him a bunch of times, so that's kinda cool. Maybe I'll have like a really cool like presentation set up too. Dude, what if they have a fucking like playable demo and you get to play it? I, I will be face <laughs> I'll be FaceTiming you and then telling you ahead of time that it's not a pocket dial this time, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Let me watch you play it. <laughs> <laughs> he's but, actually watching he's actually watching the Let's Play, guys. Yeah. But uh, I will say I'm I'm kind of I'm pleased with the positive reception. Because I swear, last time they showed Final Fantasy VII, everyone was just like ragging on it. They're like, "Oh, it's never going to come out. We've waited for so long." Blah blah blah. And this time, everyone was like, "Hey, that looks pretty cool. I'm pretty excited." And like, how well, how many times are people going to say that about everything though? Yeah, they, yeah. everybody wants it's 2019. Everybody wants everything like available now. Like, you show me a commercial, why can't I buy it? True. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I'm excited to see more. I hope they have a cool setup because, like, last year for, you know, I mean, I'm sure anyone watching this has watched some sort of E3 video before. And they, like, last year for the Resident Evil 2 remake, they had, like, a whole Raccoon City police department yeah. thing set up for stuff like that. Like, that's the kind of stuff I'm looking forward to seeing. I'm I'm just hoping I can see it all. Yeah. Totally. I'm kind of, I'm kind of pissed off, though, that uh, Bethesda and Microsoft are doing their things like before the thing actually starts mm -hmm. so i don't get to go to the bethesda thing i don't get to go to the microsoft thing yeah i'm going to the nintendo thing i'm going to the squeenix one so <laughs> i'm sure you'll have fun yeah. either way yeah I mean, yeah I'm, like i said i'm a bit bummed like that's that that's a lot of like what i wanted to do yeah. when i went yeah. it's to be to sit there and be hyped in the crowd when they're announcing stuff that you figure it probably is coming out anyway that mm -hmm. got spoiled. Got spoiled by Walmart. Yeah. The things and stuff like last year. Did you have you seen any of the stuff that Rage 2 is doing? For yeah. the for the first anniversary of the Walmart Rage 2 leak, they're actually letting they're releasing these special edition Xbox controllers with screenshots of the leak on the controller. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was pretty awesome. And then I saw something uh I don't I actually checked it my walmart but there's a person i don't know if they just made it as a joke but i think it's an actual thing that people when you buy it at walmart some people anyway are getting like uh there's like a liner on it which is like the fake leaked art like the you know the pre-official mm -hmm. art that just says yeah. rage 2 with like some neon colors yeah on it and it's got like the leak like info on the leak at the back i'm like that's pretty funny that they can like joke about it that much yeah no. Anyway, anyway, I'm I'm really hoping that they have some huge stuff for E3. I'm, I've seen a bunch of people ragging on it before it's even anyone's even has any idea what's going to be there. But it's something I've always wanted to go to. Yeah, and I'm sure there's going to be like tons of awesome game announcements and cool yeah, shit to see. Be, I'm hoping to meet some cool people. Maybe I'll meet Kojima. Yeah. That'd be um, awesome. Anyways, sure. anyways, yeah. more to okay. more to come on that once I'm yeah. actually there. Um, yeah. So besides that, a couple other things I just want to give a shout out. 
because uh, we don't see a lot of great like game documentaries. Uh, but uh, in the last couple of last week, week and a half, I think actually we've gotten two really cool uh, game documentaries. Uh, first one uh, was last week. Um, Sony released a God of War raising Kratos uh, documentary. It's almost two hours and it's about the kind of development of the God of War 2018 uh, kind of talks about like, you know, starts off talking about some of the older stuff and kind of where the series left off and kind of some of the reception and how they were, you know, trying to reinvigorate things and goes into the development and talking about pretty much how they came up with, you know, kind of the game of the year, 2018 God of War. Boy, did they reinvigorate that shit. Yeah. yeah. I, I, was, I wasn't burnt out on it, but somehow I got reinvigorated. Yeah, it's just so I'm, I'm, always, I'm always hyped when something new God of War is coming out, and then this coming out, it was just I had to spray Teflon on the inside of my pants anytime something was <laughs> announced. Yeah, and then, for sure. And I had to wear those while I was playing it. Uh, and then uh, there is a YouTube channel that's been around for a little while uh, called No Clip, and they do mostly uh documentaries kind of smaller uh sometimes like 15 minutes sometimes half an hour sometimes an hour uh, a lot of times looking at games uh but they just put out a new one called telltale the human stories behind the games which basically talks about what happened with telltale studios and their clo- or telltale games and like the reason they closed and kind of like less about the, like, I guess, quote unquote drama about it and more the people behind the scenes and kind of like how, what their experience was like and how it affected what, like what they're working on. And, uh, it's pretty interesting, really interesting. Look, uh, no clip does great stuff. So definitely recommend checking them out. Yeah. You showed that today and I actually put it on my watch later cause it looked like it was pretty long, but, uh, maybe I'll watch it after this. Yeah. And they, they have a bunch of other really good, uh, mini documentaries, and they also they they do uh, two minute reviews, um, cool. and What's the, the everything's pretty much led and hosted by, and I don't know the guy's name, but he was kind of a notable figure from Gamespot. And now he, he split off to like do his own thing, and initially No Clip started off uh, crowdfunded for like a lot of the stuff they were doing at first, and now it's kind of took on a life of its own, which is neat really good stuff what other ones do you recommend uh i can't think of any off the top of my head (laughs) all of them like seriously they're super good well i well i'm gonna have to check them out more because i i didn't subscribe but i added that to my watch later yeah definitely check out more uh so then i think here um should we uh, talk it up about some beat em ups? Um, obviously, yeah. Think so? <laughs> I think always, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we're kind of looking at, like, oh, we didn't have tons to talk about this time. So, figured we'd try to figure out something to, to fill some time and what, what a perfect fit when we've both been playing tons of beat-em-ups lately uh me mostly with uh the uh capcom beat-em-up bundle and then just previously with some other like game night hangouts just playing some other just multiplayer beat-em-ups just finding random games to play with friends and then you going going hardcore with your your uh fight stick all the way i can't get enough of these beat-em-ups and shoot em ups it's been like 90 percent of what i've been playing lately honestly yeah, so uh, I kind of thought it would be fun just to mention, shout out some of our favorite beat 'em ups, some that we haven't maybe talked about so much uh, recently. Oh yeah, um, and I actually I just pulled up a list because uh, my memory is trash when I'm put on the spot, so I just pull up a little <laughs> list where I can just kind of refer to a few random games as as we talk, but I figured 
kind of starting out like you know with the the big like the heavy hitters like the most you know like our favorite beat em ups i guess and oh, yeah. i and i'm pretty sure we've mentioned before like turtles in time and turtles arcade game x men yeah. uh oh, yeah. simpsons streets of rage golden axe final fights they're the the basically the ones that everybody knows yeah yeah the kind, of, kind of things yeah you know even stuff um, like uh double dragon and um river city ransom yep yep new and My new own. new gen ones even stuff like devil may cry and god of war like oh, you, yeah, but those definitely Yakuza. Yeah. Yakuza yeah. is like the, the new beat em ups yeah straight up oh, um, man you got you got to play some yakuza oh just talking yeah. about it, it makes me want to peace out yeah <laughs> sure um yeah and we already mentioned like um uh, one of my favorites, Maximum Carnage. Uh, oh, yeah. I love that oh, game just because I mean, I love Carnage. It had Venom, had Green Jello music, which oh, yeah. is like, we've, one of my all time favorites. We've mentioned our love of, of the Maximum Carnage ness. Yeah, yeah. On a couple occasions for show. Uh, related yeah. one that I have still never played uh, Separation Anxiety. I played it. It's I've played it. I hear it sounds good. It's not as good. It's got co-op, which is awesome, mm -hmm. but it's there's just something off about it. Mm -hmm. it's just, I mean, maybe the story's just not as good, kind of thing. But sure. Something just it, the I don't know. The sprites look kind of weird. They look like plasticky to me. Mm -hmm. It's always kind of bothered me. I mean, it's a fun game, and I don't hate it, but it's just if I'm gonna play a Spider-Man beat 'em up, you know where I'm going. Sure. Sure. Um. Yeah, I'm just uh, looking at my little list here, seeing some notable. It's kind of split up into like 2D and th or like 2D sprites and then like 3D rendered ones. So it's kind of a weird list. Um, like it has a sprite based like, of course, Scott Pilgrim versus the world, which was super awesome and great I mean, if you happen to have it. Yeah. Because <laughs> if you don't have I mean, it, you can't get it. Yeah, if you haven't already purchased it. If you got it on Xbox, you can still re-download it. Yeah, same with, it. I got it on PS3, fortunately. So that's awesome. But yeah, it's uh, it's it came out of nowhere, too. It was just amazing. Like I like the movie and all that, but the game was like the, the highlight to me. Yeah, and actually, uh, just recently... Um, crap, I wish I could remember... Somebody shared the article. It might have been, might have been Smash JT, uh, but uh, Anamanaguchi, who they've done kind of like they're like retro chip tunes music, uh, but they did the music for uh, Scott Pilgrim, the game. They might have done some stuff for the movie too, but there was a rumor going around that they were one of the reasons why the game was pulled because of copyright disputes or something, and they actually just came out and said no, they're. They said that nope, we have nothing to do with it. Like it has our blessing. We want this game to be available because of the fact that people leave us alone and stop saying that we got the game pulled now. It's like Yeah, right. So even if they did, they just totally <laughs> I was seeing that idea. Yeah. Uh, actually one of my I think my most wanted NES game right now is uh Mighty Final Fight. Mm, God yep. love that game. I think that's my favorite beat 'em up on the NES. As far as those go, uh, Battletoads Double Dragon is another really, really solid one. I it's like Battletoads. Just straight the up NES. Battletoads. Oh, yeah. The NES version of Battletoads Double Dragon is actually better than the Super Nintendo one. Yeah, I actually, is, it just feels tighter. Which, yeah, which is not very often. The, the hit detection feels better, too. Yeah, yeah. And Super Nintendo version looks a little, I think it looks a little better. But of course, you know, sixteen bit, yeah. eight, eight bit. Oh, but yeah, yeah definitely. We're all just... about gameplay over graphics here, man. We yeah. we we throwing that shit in my face. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I like the Splatterhouse games too. Ah. Yep, Splatterhouse, definitely. Um, I I liked Splatterhouse before I even played it. I used to have a comic book which had the con uh, the 
art like an ad for it in the back and i was already like this looks like the coolest game of all time mm. and then fast forward to like i don't know 15 years later and uh got together with my wife and she happened to have a turbo graphics 16 with splatterhouse and i finally got to play it <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't the best game ever but it was a really cool ass game yeah yeah um let's see i bought a, a game one actually two of them that i want to get um repros of because they were never released here and they're actually pretty decent are uh, the sailor moon uh beat em ups yeah i've got one of them on the on the super nintendo is actually one of the or the super famicom version I, it's one of the first games I actually imported i think maybe the very first game i ever imported hmm. To, to play with my wife and, and the girls and yeah they they love that game same with on my fight stick there's an arcade sailor moon game and i think the girls have played through it about five times i mentioned it last time mm-hmm. they played through it about five times and i played it through it like at least one and a half times with it yeah. and but but it's hard to get a, a turn in when they want to play sure so they're, they're my girls for sure uh and another import game that i haven't gotten yet but i actually just recently learned about uh, Jason sent me a video that was basically a compilation of all the beat em ups on the Super Nintendo and Super Famicom. And one game like really stood out to me. You know, I'm I'm a sucker for fan service that always catch my catches my attention. But then the gameplay itself looked awesome. And it's a game called Gourmet Sentai Bara Yaru. Uh, also, it uh, I had dang it. I had. Um, the oh, the English translation is Rose Rascals Gourmet Squadron, uh, but it's a beat 'em up as like three different characters. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, that, I said, of course. Who doesn't know that that's what it's called? Right, right. It's only uh, logical. <laughs> but yeah, it just looks like a really cool beat 'em up. It's kind of later, a later Super yeah. Nintendo game, so it has like a little, you know, a little bit extra with its. Uh, animations and stuff like that, and um, yeah. just looks like yeah, there's a lot of variety to the combat. And... Yeah, it looks like everything you want to beat them up to be. Honestly, out of the uh, out of the import games, that was definitely like the most Im- impressive looking one to me too. Like, I think out of all of those, there's only maybe like three or four that I really wanted, like mm. would seriously consider importing. Yeah, but I think the video going. Actually, I think I almost have all the beat em ups for. Super Nintendo, that's crazy. You know, there's the super yeah. expensive ones that I like. I'm not going to shell out the cash for, but mm-hmm. uh, so like, well, there's like Captain Commando for that. There's yep. yeah, there's, there's a couple of you know, there's Final Fight Guy, which is the super expensive one. Yep, uh, I'm not going to get that unless it's by accident. But yeah, I'm only I'm only missing a handful of them, and they're not all pricey ones. I got a, a bunch of games. Pricey. Hell yeah, Spider Man's. Um, yeah, there's. Yeah. I was happy to find that out because the. Well, we're talking about beat 'em ups because we love them, so it's something good to know. I know I'm not near having all the RPGs, but I'm near on my other favorite genre. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and kind of another shout out to. I don't know. It seems like every time I see people talking about these games, they're kind of crapping on them. And I don't know. I, me and my friends, when we used to play back in the day, we had a lot of fun with them. But uh, Fighting Force. Hell yeah. I was going to mention that. It's the spiritual successor to Streets of Rage, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the first 3D beat em ups that actually did it right. Yeah, and at the time, like kind of the standout to me was it was Core Design who also worked on Tomb Raider. So I was like, oh, cool. And yeah, I mean, a little a little blocky looking, but you know, that was PS1. It's kind of to be expected. Yeah, I I blind rented it when I tried it out just because it looked cool as shit and I was not disappointed. Yeah. It was as most beat em ups, it was a pretty pretty short playthrough, but Mm Is something you wanted to dive right back into after you beat it. So, um, it yeah, and another I, I guess uh, a PS2 beat 'em up that I think is severely underrated, and I rarely get hear anybody talking about it is Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks. Oh yeah, badass, so good. 
Hell yeah. I remember like when I was trying to figure I I couldn't remember which one it was. Because there's a couple of you know, there's a couple of different genre Mortal Kombat games yep. that I was trying to figure out because there's one that's like you walk you walk around first person and it's got like a quest mode and Oh, and that's that. probably you're probably thinking Deception because yeah. that was its yeah. conquest mode, it's single player, yeah. which was awesome. I loved it so much. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I said. Like all like they they all had like different ones. I, I always mix them up. But, but Shaolin I, Monks was pure beat em up the whole game. Hell yeah. And that's what I liked about uh Tekken five. Mm -hmm. Tekken six. Tekken No oh, Tekken six. Tekken six had like a beat em up story mode too, and I thought that was that was one of my favorite parts of the game. That was definitely my most played part of the game anyway. Uh, yeah, and there's actually, and I still haven't played it, and I thought it looked really cool, and I picked it up just because of the fact that I thought it looked cool, uh, not necessarily that it was related to Tekken, was a PS2 game called Death by Degrees. Oh, yeah, the spinoff one, right? Yeah, spinoff game, and you play as uh, Nina, and it's yeah, uh, yeah, basically beat him up. I still haven't got to check that one out. Another cool one for the PS2 is God Hand. I've heard... Good things about that. I've never played it myself. Don't know much about it. It's pretty didn't tight. They, I've only played, didn't they just didn't release they a new one or something? Or am I? I'm, maybe I'm thinking of something else. What? I hope so. Be <laughs> great news for me. I'm just going on Amazon right now, and just, we'll both just be silent for five minutes on the podcast. Oh yeah, so here it is. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not, I don't think so. Just from my initial glance. It's God something, God something just released a new one. Oh, you're thinking God Eater. Ah, uh, yeah. Different God game. Eater 3. Yeah. Different game. Um, yeah, I'm sure. Man, there's so many beat em ups. Like, you just yeah, well, keep well, shouting well, out names. Like, oh, Bayonetta. Bayonetta 1 yeah. and 2. Oh, yeah. I need to play 2 still. Which I finally can because of your Wii U hookup. Hell yeah, dude! And I actually bought I bought Bayonetta two new for the Wii U long before I had a Wii U because uh, it was that dual pack. Yeah, People and I was like was, losing was, their minds about it. So I was like, ah, I'm gonna grab one while I can. I, I can't remember what I I traded for it. I, I owe my friend a cheeseburger, and I think I gave him five bucks or something <laughs> like that. And he said he traded because he beat it. And he didn't really care. He ain't all about. He uh, really wanted a cheeseburger. It wasn't even a good cheeseburger. I think he just wanted like a fucking a &W team burger or something. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, that works. Yeah, fuck yeah. So that works for me. I don't know. I'll trade a cheeseburger for just about any game. <laughs> it's no sports games. Um. Oh. Uh. Kind of some some games that people don't often think of when they say beat 'em ups. Are some of the vanillaware games like Dragon's Crown totally straight up beat em oh. up? Oh, yeah, those, those uh, and even Odin Sphere plays like a beat em up, less of the multiplayer component, but um, yeah, a lot of the vanilla game, vanillaware games are very much like that. Bat Batman Returns for Super Nintendo, mm -hmm. yeah, it's like, I, one of the, it's like one of the cheapest retro uh beat em ups to get a hold of like it, it for some reason like most people seem to know that it's awesome mm. it still it still remains like a ten dollar game it's like one of the most accessible and i don't games. have it i think a lot of, <laughs> see i i get a lot of, a lot of, see it's like the nes batman the sunsoft one and then like all the other ones for some reason seem like they're super expensive even though it's just return of the joker that's a super expensive one yeah for the nes yeah yeah yeah. And you know what's not an expensive Batman game? Batman VR. <laughs> <laughs> it's on my list. Um, oh, another beat em up that never really gets any attention is uh, uh, Mutant Fighter Mazen Saga for the Genesis. Hell yeah. Which is interesting because it's actually based on a spin off. Uh, there's a, a old, like, kind of cheesy 70s uh, anime called Marzinger uh, Z. And the, oh, yeah, the, the, 
it's kind of just like your standard think uh very traditional 70s anime like voltron basically voltron uh but yeah. there is an i think it might have been the actual original creator of that did uh a spin-off like an alternate universe uh but he went dark like a dark route like i think Sweet. um old sci-fi anime or stuff like even like vampire hunter d kind of like that very like yeah a lot of line work sort of stuff and the game is based on that uh manga spinoff so it's kind of this like dark uh sci-fi action beat-em-up game where you go through the game just kind of doing your standard beat-em-up and then for the boss fights it's it's kind of like power rangers where well, your dude just gets really big and then you fight uh, the boss. Uh, yeah. Pretty tough game. I haven't really spent much uh, time with it since I picked it up. As excited as I was to finally rediscover that game. Uh, yeah, you was but, just like sitting on a rack on your way out of a store, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, and it just caught my yeah. eye and I was like, holy crap, that's the game I've been looking for like basically since I started collecting again. Nothing's cooler than like finding out something that you can't remember the name of, like yes. a movie. Like, oh, there's this old horror movie, and I can't remember. And you, and you try to explain it to someone, and they're like, "Yeah, that's like every horror movie." Oh, where's the guy? And he's like, "This guy's head explodes, and then this happens." You're like, "Okay, you've narrowed it down by only about seventy percent of mm. uh, horror movies have that." Yeah, it's the it's the worst thing uh, when you can't find something and you want it really badly. Yeah. Uh, another couple of speaking of well, speaking of Power Rangers, the Power Ranger movie one is actually pretty awesome, even if you don't like Power Rangers. Yeah, I never really got it myself, but I, I like the Power Ranger movie one, and uh, I dig I other dig, stuff. I, from Genesis. Like, Ranger, I even like I don't, I don't know how people feel about Comic Zone, but I always thought that was like a really oh, yeah, cool, yeah, like Comics original, awesome. original style of beat em up. Like, so, I never uh, played so it. Yeah, I played it. Oh, what's oh, man? There's like one that came out on the 360, which is basically like a, a, a spiritual successor to it. Where it's got like I think it's called Unbound Saga, and it's, it's like a follow up to Comic Zone. It's pretty tight too. Mm. I also love the ones where you pick up like ridiculous weapons. Um, the earliest one I remember playing in arcades was uh, Have you ever heard of Growl? Um, I don't. I'm not sure. Honestly, about that it's, one. It's a, it's a pretty cool one. You pick up like rocket launchers and crap like that. I actually, when I got my arcade stick, that's one of the game, first games I played on it. But I have it for the Genesis as well, and they're both awesome games. Like it's it's really awesome, but then it has the most like obscure, weird ending. Like they just kind of were like, "Shit, this is supposed to be on next week," and you just fight this really weird like snake boss. I don't know where everything's like. You basically like a you look, you click look like Crocodile Dundee or Indiana Jones kind of guys, and you're basically like beating up poachers and stuff like that. So you're like saving animals and shit, and uh, and then at the end you just fight this random ass snake boss dude. <laughs> I don't know. It just goes all kind of like supernatural. So the yeah. end kind of sucked on it, but the rest of the game I thought was just awesome. Sure, sure. Um... Hmm. Oh, one uh, that I haven't played yet. I hear it's really cool. Uh, Black Metal Gamer uh, hyped this one quite a bit. Um, uh, Mother Russia Bleeds. Kind of, it's basically like Hotline Miami, but a beat em up. Like, kind of has that like neo retro or neon retro vibe to it. it. Super violent. Cool. I like violence. Yeah, yeah. But um, any other any other beat em ups you can think of that you want to give a shout out before we super we notable ones uh, close um, out the segment? There's not much else I can really think of. I mean, I can I mean there's a there. lot. There's a lot out there. I mean, we couldn't even cover all of them if we wanted. Yeah, just just on the uh, arcade stick, there's a fucking ton of them. That's how I've been playing through so many of them. But uh, uh, like even like stuff like Hook. Yeah, like the Robin Williams Peter Pan movie, like that's one of my favorite beat 'em ups. 
it's probably a lot to do with nostalgia, but it, mm -hmm. I played it again. It was the first game I played on my arcade stick, and I still thought it was super fun. Uh, just random stuff you wouldn't expect him to be a cool beat em up ends up being like some of the coolest shit. Yeah, totally. Just like Bucky O'Hare, like it was like I think it's almost like it's it could stand up against stuff like Turtles in Time. It was mm -hmm. really really well done. Cool. But uh, yeah, there's there's a there's a million. Yeah. <laughs> A lot but of them just, are great. But Blade Master is not yeah. fuck Blade Master. <laughs> That's our whole point of this whole conversation. All those games are better than Blade Master. Totally. So don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um so then let's uh let's go into our community question. And uh last week community question was uh regarding shoot 'em ups or shmups uh question was what do you prefer horizontal or vertical and unfortunately we didn't get any responses that's what she asked Ex <laughs> zing <laughs> <laughs> but um <laughs> both if if she knows what's up i guess <laughs> but um yeah so you kind of you kind of covered it um, your yeah, thoughts last I, time, but you want to give a little I refresh. Spoiled mine by, yeah, I spoiled mine by kind of talking about the games I beat because they were all the same kind. And I definitely prefer the vertical style over the horizontal. Something about the horizontal I can't really get into. I mean, there's some really good games, don't get me wrong, but if I'm feeling that kind of game, it's always going to be a hor it's going to be a vertical mm. as far as i'm concerned like all the games i really like playing like there's awesome ones like life force and r type and mm. stuff like that but you know can't all the ones i really like like ride in and space mega force and uh, apb and battle garega even stuff that's not so good i still really enjoy like vapor trail doesn't hold up as much as i Used to like it when I was a kid. I still think it's pretty. You know, stuff like Gradius and R Type, uh, Life Force, but other games, you know, I more recently, I. I finally played some of the Raiden games and of course there's stuff like 1942 and uh and then yeah. some of the like the the 2.5D or the 3D ones like Ein Einhander Ikaruga stuff like that there's like all types of like newer newer ones yeah they come out with new ones all the time and shit like I mean this could even kind of blend into like some cross genre stuff if you really get down to it like uh, like that rab rabby reby, like it's yeah. very much a sh it's more it's bullet hell, but bullet hell was born from schmups. You know what's what's the All difference right. really? Except you're running on a, on a platform versus moving back and forth. Uh, you know, and and if and if you can't make up your mind if you like vertical or horizontal, there's also what has the best voice acting. And you got to go with my old favorite, Castle of Shikigami 2. Uh, Best translation? Zero have ever, Have you ever heard heard the voice acting in Castle of Shikigami 2? I think I have. I'm pretty sure I have. and Because I've watched a few of those compilation bad trend, yeah. or bad voice acting translations. Yeah, the funny thing is, like, I, I played it. And then, like, I was just randomly watching a video. Mm. Like a week later, and all of a sudden it was just brought up. I was like, I've never heard of this game. And then I got it at like I got it off Facebook Marketplace for like two bucks. Nice. I was like, oh, cool. Like a not same PS2 game that's in everybody's collection. You know, mm. you're gonna get the God of Wars and the Cabela's games, and you're gonna get some Grand Theft Autos and some random shitty racing games. And I was just like, oh, what's that? And I grabbed that. Yeah. And I was laughing at it, and I was like, "Man, I wonder if anybody knows about this game." And then I was watching some random ass video, and they brought it up. And I was like, oh, "Okay, 
good. It's well documented. Well, this yeah. Like I said, like one of the more like super famous, like early, like when people first discovered emulation and like, oh crap, we can play like all these games that we never got in America, like, and turned into like initially like one of the like big like early internet memes was zero wing, you know, all your base are belong to us. You know, yeah. you say welcome to die. Move, so it's from, it's from X-Men. Uh, move, uh, lo, move all zig. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah, good times. Schmops. But uh, I figured, so, you know, talked about a little bit of shmups last time and since we spent all this time talking about beat em ups i'm sure our listeners were yelling at us saying why the hell didn't you mention this game it deserves the praise i was avoiding that one you're thinking of just to piss you off specific listener i was avoiding it to get you <laughs> to comment and let us know so that's going to be our community question uh for so the next you're, you're from engagement i'm just here to be an asshole <laughs> <laughs> yeah well asshole <laughs> aside i would like to know we would like to know what are some of your favorite beat-em-ups and what are some underrated beat-em-ups uh maybe even some things that we didn't touch on of course you know shout out your favorites but you know yeah. let us know some other ones that really deserve it's, that it's, it's kind of it's kind of shameful neither of us talked about alien versus predator or alien true or ninja warriors like there's there's so many there's yeah. so many which ones yeah. are are we are we shitty video game enthusiasts by not mentioning? It's like what? How yeah. the hell do you not mention? Well, it's not an engaging podcast if you're not yelling in your mind at least. At, yes. But when I can't think of a game's name immediately, and you got it right on the tip of your tongue. <laughs> Been there, done that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Podcast I listen to. Wow, well, I even just listened to your your uh, the one you the the one where about the Thor DS game. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, like, I'm just sitting there like it's this it's this <laughs> like you're gonna hear me be like yes jason has just informed me through mind transfer that it's this game yeah, for sure <laughs> uh yeah so uh, please let us know your thoughts on that one uh and then let's kind of jump into closing segments here uh let's look at some games coming out in the next couple weeks got Okay. Some cool stuff. Uh, one that I pre-ordered. I actually backed the Kickstarter that was not successful, which is unfortunate because I think people just dismissed it on name alone and didn't actually look at the gameplay because the game looks really like a lot of fun. Uh, and that is Bubsy Pause on Fire, which, like I said, there was going to be a Kickstarter to get a physical version the Kickstarter fell through, didn't meet your funding, but another company stepped in and was like, bam, we got you, boo. Physical version. Limited yeah. edition, baby. Woo! It should be getting delivered for me. <laughs> I think uh, for some reason, it, uh, I think it just being a smaller game, they didn't do day one uh, delivery. Uh, uh, so I won't be getting it on release, but it will be. I'll, I'll have it by this weekend, or I think like Friday or Saturday or something. Nah, I hope they pull it out Friday the thirteenth on you, bud. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just make you uh, wait like eight eight months. That's that's mean. I don't actually. I still got the digital it. code though, day yeah. one for Friday thirteenth. So There's some am. other good stuff that came out really recently too, like Shakedown Hawaii just came out last week. Yep. Got a Plague Tale. Which yep. Looks which amazing. I really want to. I copy to arrive, and I still need to finish Days Gone so I can jump into that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Rage Two. Yeah, Rage Two. Um, but and yeah, next tomorrow, the next couple weeks is it looks like a lot of ports. Tomorrow oh is this what I'm going to be playing? I'm probably going to ditch Trails of Cold Steel until I beat all these games. Pause, Pause on fire. Castlevania. <laughs> anniversary collection. I'm yeah. all over that shit. Castlevania anniversary collection with the long-awaited, long-anticipated. Never been available besides the Genesis. Castlevania Bloodlines. Yeah. And uh, even though, like, still my favorite. I, I'm really not too years. hyped for it. Haunted Castle is on there, which yeah. is kind of like the OG jank version of Castlevania. Have you ever played it? 
<laughs> no, it looks a little rough. I bought it on its own when it came on the uh, was it Arcade Archives or whatever they fucking call it on PS4. It was like on sale. Mm-hmm. I grabbed it and I was just like, "Wow, I don't enjoy this." And then it's also <laughs> on my fight stick thing, and I I yeah. just couldn't bring myself to play through it. It's one yeah. of those. I think it's. I can't remember. I think it's one of those things. Even if you're playing the arcade, you just start over from the beginning of the level. Like you don't just get up from where you died, like mm-hmm. most games. So I'm pretty sure even that, even then, you're just like, oh. Yeah. So even though I gave you my money, I just get to start from the beginning again. Neat. Mm-hmm. So yeah, not not as looking forward to that, but I'm, I I want to try Kid Dracula finally. That's the only game I haven't played out of all of those. Oh, and that that game will forever break my heart because I had it. I had it on Game Boy before I was collecting, and I wasn't playing my Game Boy anymore. And I was like, yeah. So I got rid of my. I, at the time, I had a Game Boy Color. I had uh, Pokemon Blue. I had Kid Dracula. A few other games. Well, I sold them for like dirt cheap. Just because Pokemon Blue didn't mean you had to get rid of all the good games, right? Uh. Kid Dracula was that's that's a fun game. It's really cool. And I heard um, there is going to be an update for the anniversary collection that will include the Japanese versions of the games. Oh, I thought they were just included to come from the get go. I think like I, maybe I read I that think, wrong. I think it's, I I think think it's one, of those, one of those things where you, where you can select. Oh, okay, maybe. I thought it was one of those things yeah. where you like. You know, start the game up and you can pick what region you want it from. No, oh, maybe like the X, like, like yeah. the X Men yeah. game. Do that. Hmm. I yeah. shall see. We'll yeah. buy. We'll both. We both yeah. shall see because you're gonna get a free copy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's. I mean, really, that's a the main stuff. I think that's coming out in the next couple weeks. That looks interesting. Fuck yeah! yeah. Everything else is sports. Team Sonic Racing. Yeah. I like those. They're, they're actually pretty solid games. I have both the other ones. So yes. I haven't really followed much on this one, but I'm sure I'll get it if I see it at the right price. Right on. Because they're basically just Mario Kart. Yeah. And that ain't a bad thing. Yeah. Uh, well, then I guess with that said, uh, what you got going on in the next couple weeks? Video games. Lots of video games. I'm gonna play. Keep playing the arcade stick. I'll be playing all the Castlevania games for probably the foreseeable future, and uh, hopefully trucking through some more Trails of Cold Steel, because I don't want it something to distract me away from it. I'm hoping to get more pulled into the story. There's little things kind of popping up here and there that are like, "Ooh, what's that? Ooh, who's that character randomly watching me from the hill?" kind of stuff so um, i'm hoping it brings me in soon because i don't want it to lose me that gameplay keeps me playing honestly yeah it's 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 super interesting hearing that because i you know i trust in your opinions and everybody else though says the game's like one of the best like new jrpgs like hands down and it's like yeah that's 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 what made that's what put it at the top of my list like yeah everyone's like I had the first one for a while and like I was already intending to get it. And then all of a sudden I was just like, all right, I'll get the new one and I'll definitely check it out. Cause I saw that all three of them were coming out for PS4. So I was like, done. There's my chance to jump in. And I put it against ones. I kind of feel like I should have played before it now, you know, stuff like East eight. I've been mm. really wanting to start persona five, stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm hoping there's a payoff. Because like the, like I said, the the combat and stuff is awesome. Just the side side mission stuff. I honestly just go, okay. I just like Google it. Where's the locations for this crap? Because I don't care. I just want to get through it so I can get to more fighting. The con- yeah, the combat's all that's, that's keeping me really going. Like I said, some of the character stuff is cool, but there's not really a, an interesting story mm. yet. So, so that's a bummer. But yeah still fun to play it's weird yeah yeah it's one of those games you know some some games side missions are amazing and some games 
Side missions are definitely the low point of this game. So mm -hmm. well, we'll see. Maybe it'll all like wrap up into an awesome package. Like, oh man, turns out those side quests were like the coolest thing ever, and I just realized. Not likely, but yeah. All right. Well, well uh, what you got? Yeah, I will be more days gone. Like I said, like I'm not complaining. Kind of want it to be done though, so I can play some other stuff. So you're saying uh, you have like no idea, like how? I don't have a thing gauge. So it's, there's not like at a time like it, every game should tell you how long you've been playing the game for one. Like no yeah. game should not tell you how long you've been playing it. And noise is shit. And uh, there's not like a not, there's not like an overall story progress gauge either. That's a bummer. Yeah. But I have to be getting pretty far, I would think. I'm I don't know. I, I maybe I'm around like the 20, 30 hour mark. But I'm not sure. Because I've been playing it so sporadically in like hour here, a couple hours there. So yeah. it's really hard to say. But I'm, uh, uh I'm usually pretty good at uh, judging like how much of a game I got left. The only game I can think of where I wasn't wasn't right was Red Dead Two, mm. and then because I was like, "Oh yeah, it's almost done," and then it wasn't done. Then that's when I actually started getting like annoyed, like, "Okay, be done now." <laughs> that was I was opposite because like when the point where you got where you're like ready to be done is like when I got like super invested. Yeah, but yeah. It is what it is. Then when the, story, when the story was actually done, the prologue, I was fine with the prologue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> prologue, <laughs> like, yeah, but after that, after that first, the big twist is when I like started being done with it, and then towards the end, I was right into it again. Like I didn't say it wasn't just like I was like Ugh, mm -hmm. the whole the whole end, but there was a few. There's a few hours, probably about a ten hour thing, where I was like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, Let's go. Yeah. The end of the story was good, and and the prologue was fine. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that's that's ultimately what I will be up to in the next couple weeks. We'll see if I can get to uh, a Plague's Tale because I am super interested in that, and I got a bunch of random stuff that hopefully I can get going on some weekend game nights uh, in the next oh, couple yeah. weeks here. So then with that said, I think I will let anybody still listening know how they can get a hold of us if they want to get a hold of us. Uh, Everybody of does. <laughs> of course, the podcast is on YouTube. It is on SoundCloud. You can find it on iTunes. And if you have podcast apps, you can also look it up there. If you want to get a hold of me, you can find me on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, as the game grinder and then jason is on youtube facebook and twitter look him up as corpse flood and you will find him you better well, if you find someone else let me know I'm yeah <laughs> so i guess that is going to do it for this episode of the game tennis podcast hit us up let us know your thoughts i think we will talk to you next time will we yeah, we'll, we'll talk to you next time. Yes! Peace! Bye.